did all the art go? The colours, the sounds, the movement, the buzz, buzz, buzzing of creation. The walls adorned with things we made, folded and filed away, forgotten. Where did all the art go? The noise, the fire, the expression, the wide eyes and wider smiles, the scribbles and scraps of spark and ideas, locked and hidden away, forgotten. Well, the arts are such a central part of our curriculum here at Fred Longworth High School. And one of the reasons for that is we believe it gives the children confidence. We believe it gives them a chance to use their creativity. We believe it gives them a chance to use their imagination. And actually, you've only got to walk into any drama lesson, any music lesson, to see all of those things really on display. I there's, everyone just really enjoys it and it's something that school always talks about and it's something that our school is really proud of. Mm -hmm. We're an arts academy so why should we not have the opportunity because we do all these fun things, you have to show off. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you guys feel but I feel like it gives you the experience to try something new. Oh, it's just really exciting, like you see yeah. something it's just like... And it just really kind of like comes with that. Yeah, and you're just like, that's, <laughs> that's something that's cool, I'm going to do something that's based around that. seven or year eight I can never remember um, it was the Hillsborough thing Hillsborough disaster we did a drama performance on it did you? yeah, yeah, yeah we did. Um, and I think that performance is the moment that it just clicked that this was the thing for me it actually engages them in the learning it makes them want to be here it makes them want to be involved but there are some harder skills that they actually pick up by, through involvement in the arts. Yeah. So you were watching the year 11 to do the primary dance festival, that, those leadership qualities and skills yeah. we were talking about yeah. certain students after and, and I was saying I can't believe the, the, the change in that girl watching how she spoke to those year fives and sixes. Yeah. One of my highlights was performing at the Octagon. That was, oh, I was just like stood there on stage and I saw all the people like and it was so big and I was there like this is what I want to do. It's that, it's that independence, you know, that we were in a lesson this morning with my year nines and you just kind of, you stand in the middle of this hurricane of them building their own sets and setting up their own lights and sometimes you think, like, God, if I went for a cup of tea, would, would any of these people notice? A teacher can attribute seriousness to students' ambitions. They can take them seriously and that's so important. It's so important now in the arts in this country that teachers are put in a position where they can encourage and nurture and just take it seriously, actually. Just say, yeah, you want to do that? All right, let's go. Let's take it seriously and let's do it. You want to be an actor? All right, this is what you've got to do. You want to be a musician? You want to be a rapper? You want to be whatever? This is what you've got to do. Step up, go to work. And the schools need to be an environment where ambition is taken seriously. They want to create work because they want to create it, not because we've asked them to, not because you know, necessarily they're driven by a grade or a need to succeed. It's just that, that brilliant love of making stuff. In maths, like, you get, you get given a problem in a textbook, they work through the answers with you. Without that textbook, how do you do it? It's like with drama, when you're stuck with an issue like in, the, in your group, what do you do? You find new ways around it. So in maths, you're able to problem solve because of the skills you've learned in drama. As the arts continue to thrive in our school, elsewhere the picture is much bleaker. Since 2010, the number of hours of art, drama and music taught has fallen by almost 38,000. This means that young people like me are finding it much harder to discover our passions, nurture our talents and to create and explore art, music, dance and drama, the very things that make us unique as human beings. We are lucky here that we get to experience such a rich arts curriculum and yet, despite the creative industries bringing in around £87 billion to the UK economy, in schools up and down the country, the fight is on for the survival of cultural education.
it's really important that young people get the opportunity to study subjects like music and dance and drama and art and design as part of their curriculums in their schools. It means that absolutely everybody gets the chance to uh, have creativity in their lives, creativity in their education and to fulfil their potential. The feeling of being inspired is its like somebody opening a door you didn't think was there and all this this fresh breeze comes in and you are invited through that door. There's nothing quite as exciting as the buzz of energy that happens when you have creativity and creative people around you. I want that to be an opportunity that every single child in this country also has. And it's then, almost like an adrenaline rush. Like yeah. Like, you're like, oh my word, I've got an idea, then you're like, so When you're example. really stuck at something, yeah, and yeah. you're just like, oh my God, I just had the flow of best ideas. idea yes. ever, yeah. and then everything just smooths it. We went to the National Theatre and we saw a, um, a play by the theatre company Complicite and it was a play called Mnemonic and it was experimental theatre, it was physical theatre and it was something I'd never seen before. So very clearly I remember coming away from that being, for want of a less grandiose term, mind blown by what I'd just seen because it wasn't traditional theatre, let alone traditional television that I was used to seeing all the time. It is absolutely exhilarating and from then all bets are off because you're walking into another reality. You're walking into a, a world where you've been invited, where all things are, are possible. It's, it's very clear for me. You go and see a piece of theatre, you go and see a film, you go and see some stand-up poetry, you go to a gig. You do something that introduces you to an art form that you're not necessarily familiar with. And what it does is it challenges you. So as a viewer or as an audience member, you're not necessarily comfortable because you're not in your comfort zone. You're not watching another episode of Coronation Street that you might just watch at home with your family. So as a teenager, it, it opens your mind to all of these different sources of knowledge, sources of um, information, inspiration that, that challenge you. What that does is that sparks your imagination. <sighs> Once you appreciate just how valuable the arts are in delivering the curriculum and bringing the best out of our young people, you've got to try and ensure that, that the arts remain a vital part of it. Employers tell us that they want those skills. They want those skills of, of, of people being able to communicate with one another properly and actually being able to compromise and work with other, other human beings, as it were. And for me, the arts really does teach that. Um, but also in terms of preparing for life, it teaches you the hard lesson that you have to actually work at things and get things right. Why do we need to learn? Why do we need education? What's the point? Why bother? Uh, I think it's absolutely crucial to the survival of, of the human race. We are physically not very strong. We are remarkably easily injured as, as, as an animal. Uh, we survive for one or two reasons. The main one is we adapt changes in our environment, and that's to opportunities and threats largely. And we do it quickly. We are intelligent, but we are creative. I, I've seen what, what arts has done across Wigan Education Authority, and, and when you see the, the young people perform or produce a piece of art that, that gives shows their achievement and gives them a pride in, in, the, in their achievement, you can see just how valuable it is. The reason why I, I mention the word creative is if you're going to adapt, you have to come up with something new. To come up with something new, you have to be creative. So, so I'm concerned, the primary purpose of education is to teach people to be creative. I think the skills they're looking for are not on bits of paper, they're not academic standards. There will be an element of that, of course, they'll be able to read and write and do art sales, etc. etc. But what I think they're looking for is the ability to adapt. My job is I'm a filmmaker, I'm a producer, so my job is to take a brief from a, from a client, and that client might be a brand, it might be. Um, uh, a music artist who needs a piece of film content to promote them. 
and that's my job. So my job is to interpret something and turn it into a, something valuable. And the way I do that is taking all of the skills that I learn in arts education, in, in learning English literature, in, in thinking for yourself and also developing an identity as some, of someone who's creative, who has an individualistic uh, viewpoint on the world. It sounds very cliche, but I think drama or dance or art or photography allowed people to unlock their true potential. It sounds yeah. very yeah. cliche. Yeah. Yeah. That's an important aspect of what we are as human beings. Um, we are innately creative. That's why our species has developed in the way that it has. And even the best engineers or the best, best mathematicians are really creative people. Um, it, it's also, I always find it fascinating how some of the great mathematicians are also really good at music. Um, and so if we take that part out of our education that, that is about creativity, um, we, we are taking something out of our civilization or the opportunities for young people um, to be great engineers as well as great artists. We made this decision that we're going to abandon the safest economic structure of the last 150 years to go out on our own. All right, that's the decision that's being made, regardless of the politics of that. We need to equip ourselves to do it. And the only way we're going to survive it is if the generation that comes after us is the best generation Britain's ever produced. And it needs to be intellectually alert. It needs to be able to collaborate. It needs to be able to think. It needs to be able to interrogate abstract ideas. We get all of that with the arts. Home and members of the Creative Industries Federation, they've just produced a report um, uh, 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 about um, it's called the Global Talent Report, and it's talk about what's going to happen in Brexit. Thirty percent of people in in the uh, UK creative industries are from overseas. We'll never backfill that if we don't invest in education. I believe arts delivers across the curriculum, and that to me is a vital part, and it's something we mustn't lose. We've got to maintain what the arts gives our students. I think one of the reasons why we've been so successful as a country in terms of our creative industries is because we have creativity in our education system. So numeracy and literacy, very, very important, but creativity, absolutely vital as well. We must do everything we possibly can to make sure that that's present in all of our schools and an opportunity that's available to all students. For me, taking an arts subject balances up the curriculum for uh, students in year 10 and 11 so that they're not just doing those subjects that consist mostly of long written pieces, um, they are doing something that actually enables them to develop their oracy skills, enables them to develop other areas of their skill set in a way that really does prepare them for life.